This is Dr. Hoenig, um, and I will talk about glucagon and somatostatin today. Glucagon is secreted from the alpha cells of the islets of Langerhans. The gene is expressed differently in different cells. So in alpha cells, we have production of glucagon and a uh, polypeptide called glucagon-releasing polypeptide. In the L cells of the intestine, we have expression of GLP-1, GLP-2, and other peptides. Glucagon is a small peptide hormone. Uh, the molecular weight is only about uh, three and a half kilodaltons. And as we said, it's produced by alpha cells of pancreas. It's produced as a pro-hormone called proglucagon. Its actions are catabolic, so it's glycogenolytic, gluconeogenic, lipolytic, and ketogenic. Looking at glycogenolysis, we can see from this slide here that glucagon as well as epinephrine uh, lead uh, to an increase in cyclic AMP through uh, G-coupled receptors. And the end result is that um, we have a phosphorylation of enzymes that are involved in glycogen degradation. So this is just opposite to what we said uh, with insulin action on glycogen. Here, a phosphorylation of enzymes means that they are active. So glycogen phosphorylase, which is the enzyme necessary for glycogen degradation, has to be phosphorylated um, in order to be active and lead to glycogenolysis. So glucagon uh, increases cyclic AMP, as we said, and it does so through a G-protein coupled membrane receptor. Um, it increases adenylate cyclase activity, and this increases cyclic AMP production, and this again leads to increases in protein kinase A. So the result is we have stimulation of glycogenolysis with glucagon through this mechanism, and we have stimulation of gluconeogenesis. So again, Stimulators of glucagon secretion are fasting, exercise, stress. So whenever we need uh, an increase in blood glucose, be available quickly. Um, decreased blood glucose, of course, will increase glucagon secretion because glucagon is gluconeogenic. Amino acids and cortisol, cortisol also being a stress hormone, will lead to glucagon secretion. Glucagon will also increase fatty acid and keto acid production, but you, have, you will see it here listed under inhibitors because when they become too high, they will actually uh, inhibit glucagon secretion. So there is a very nice feedback regulation of fatty acid production and keto acid production. Other inhibitors of um, glucagon secretion are, of course, glucose. When glucose is high, we do not need additional glucose in a healthy animal. Somatostatin inhibits glucagon secretion, um, not only glucagon secretion, but also insulin secretion. And insulin itself will inhibit glucagon secretion. Glucagon-like peptide is uh, one of the um, uh, hormones that is produced when the glucagon gene is expressed. So glucagon-like peptide 1 stimulates insulin secretion, but only when glucose concentrations are above 5 millimolar, which is the normal uh, fasting glucose concentration. So glucose has to be normal. Um, for glucagon-like peptide to stimulate insulin secretion. This peptide is used now for the treatment of diabetics, so far only in human patients. It has not been uh, used in animal patients. Um, and in humans, it's not the actual hormone that is used for the treatment because that hormone is broken down very, very rapidly. 
Uh, so in people, they use GLP-1 analogs, which are metabolized more slowly, or they uh, are treated with uh, drugs uh, inhibiting the breakdown of GLP-1. Um, these drugs are called uh, DPP-4 inhibitors. Now let's look at somatostatin. Somatostatin is synthesized by several tissues of the body, and I only want to concentrate on the uh, pancreas, on the endocrine pancreas. Somatostatin is um, secreted from the delta cells of the islets of Langerhans, and somatostatin, as we already mentioned, inhibits not only the release of insulin, but also of glucagon. So metastatin clinically can be used to treat uh, insulin-secreting tumors, which are called insulinomas, but it will only work in those tumors which actually contain somatostatin receptors. So in summary, glucagon, glucagon-like peptide 1, and somatostatin are peptide hormones. Glucagon, uh, through cyclic AMP and uh, through um, this G-protein coupled receptor and adenylate cyclase activation stimulates glycogenolysis, gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, and ketogenesis. Glucagon is stimulated by fasting, exercise, and stress primarily. Glucagon-like peptide 1 stimulates insulin secretion only when glucose concentrations are elevated, so it's actually since it's used clinically, a very safe drug and will not lead in diabetics to hypoglycemia. And looking at somatostatin, somatostatin is found in many tissues, but in the pancreas it's secreted from delta cells of the islets of Langerhans, and there it inhibits the release of insulin and glucagon.